God bless you, Shinko. God bless you, Shinko. Hello and welcome everyone to the Born Goon channel. Today we're going to be talking about the Shinko 804-805 Dual Sport 50-50 Adventure Bike Tire. I myself have been very fortunate to massacre this tire over the last few months in several types of riding conditions including sand, mud, rain, tight single track, rock, rock gardens, cactus, long trips, short trips, and everything in between. And I'm gonna tell you whether or not this tire is the unicorn of adventure bike tires. Now, before I start, make sure if you like this video, click that you like it and show your support for the Born Nagoon channel by subscribing. So let's first talk about the on-road performance here of the Shinko 804-805s. And let's just be honest for a second. If you're in the market for a 50-50 adventure bike tire, you realize you have to make some compromises. You have to give up a little bit over here so you can get a little more over here. That's just the way it works. So for you riders out there that are going to primarily spend your time on the freeways and the roads, this is not the tire for you, nor is any other 50-50 adventure tire. There are much better street-oriented options that will suit your purpose much better. Now for the riders out there that want to do both, let's also be honest and say that we're just fickle, greedy type of consumers, right? We want the best on-road tire that feels like we're on a road racing slick. And then when we're off-road, we want this tire to feel like it's a full-on aggressive knobby. Now considering that you're on a knobby tire, which just automatically has a lack of contact patch with the freeway, you would expect some negative sort of feedback from that, such as chassis wobble, decreased braking, a loose vagueness feel, excessive vibrations, loud buzzing noise, and disconnect between motorcycle input and rider response. Having said all that, the Shinko 804-805s do really well on the road. They feel stable under heavy braking, they feel great mid-corner, and on corner exit, they hold a line very well. Now there's obviously some front end wobble under heavy acceleration as you will get with all types of knobby oriented tires. But I would say compared to other 50-50 adventure bike tires that I've ridden on, such as the TKC-80s, the Pirelli Scorpion Rallies, the Michelin Anarchy Wilds, the Shinko 804-805s are going to deliver you the same type of on-road benchmark performance. Now, some of those tires will perform better in certain areas, but as a body of work and as a whole, these tires are within that performance benchmark. The thing that stands out to me the most and what I look for the most in an on-road tire is consistency. Whether it's consistently good or or it's consistently bad, I just want it to be consistent. I want to feel that corner after corner, I'm getting the same type of feedback and that the tire I am on is not going to surprise me and in my day real quick. Now I've read some reviews where riders have said that this is a very loud or buzzy tire, but compared to the ones I mentioned, it's not. It's actually quieter. Having said all that, my opinion of these tires, and as you can see from the video, they're more than adequate for street duty. You ain't gonna have no problem here. So let's talk about the off-road performance of these Shinko 804-805s. Now most of the riding that I have done on this bike and these tires has taken place here in my homeland, which is Southern California. And I'm gonna call this the land of the extremes because whenever we go riding, it's one extreme or the other. It's either extremely rough and rocky or it's extremely dry and slippery or it's extremely sandy. There never seems to be this balance in between. And because our weather remains very consistent here, meaning we hardly ever get any rain or snow, those trail conditions remain pretty consistent throughout all 12 months of the year. But on my recent trip through the Southwest, when I went through Nevada, Utah, and Arizona, I got a chance to sample some other types of conditions, some clay, some mud, some forest, and a few other things that I'm gonna talk about here. So I've really had the chance to put this tire through a lot of different conditions. Now what I wanna do in this segment is I wanna talk about each one of these areas and how this tire performed in each one of these sectors. And we'll first start out with where most of you might be riding through the truck trail, the fire road, the gravel road. That's not paved and relatively free of deep ruts and obstacles. The performance I experienced here from the front 
was very similar to the feedback and experience I had on road. I always felt that the Shinko 804-805s were well planted and they were very predictable. However, in this type of a surface, I have a little issue, or at least I'm gonna say I am experiencing personally an issue with the rear. And that is, on a surface like this, on a high horsepower, big adventure bike, you're always gonna be compromised for rear end traction. So I notice when you're trying to either slide the bike on purpose and control that slide, or you just get a little whiskey throttle and the rear end snaps out, it seems like it's a little more difficult. And I'm just saying a little tiny bit more difficult to get that rear end to come back into line or to control that slide. Now that's compared to some of the other tires that I have ridden on. Now I don't wanna to be too critical about this because it could just be something as easy as a couple of clicks of suspension adjustment or a change in tire pressure. Let's just say that my desire to fix this issue is not as strong as my current laziness and it's just something I'm dealing with. So I'm basically just bringing this up to just maybe nitpick a little and just let you know that since I normally like to ride a bike sideways anyway, and I like to steer with the rear tire. It just seems like there's a tiny bit of hesitation there of trying to get that corrected. It, there's these moments where it feels like it just wants to spit you off the high side. Again, you may not experience this, or it could just be a couple of clicks here and there on my suspension and this problem is solved. The next area is where I do most of my riding, and that is on tight single track with a lot of rough rock. Now those types of trails here in Southern California, because we don't get a lot of rain, have a tendency to get really rutted and really dry and sometimes very dusty. And I think this tire performs well. I will put it right there with the TKC80 as far as that type of off-road performance or the Pirelli Scorpion rallies that were on the bike before. I feel like it's very predictable. You have really good grip on that type of a surface. So I would say out of all of the off-road conditions, it will be those tight types of single tracks, that rough, rocky, ruddy area. That's where you're gonna get the best off-road performance in my mind from these tires. So let's talk about sand because it sucks. Now I don't wanna blame this just on the Shinko 804-805s because the Pirelli Scorpion rallies I had on before it, they sucked too. I'm gonna to say this is a majority of a Triumph Tiger problem. Compared to other adventure bikes that I have ridden, this has to be the worst sand performing motorcycle. Now I'm under no illusions here. I realize Triumph and other adventure manufacturers did not build motorcycles like this so you can be crusty demons of dirt chucking from one dune to the next and it's some sort of dune killing monster. I get that. It's still an obese, high powered motorcycle. But the Triumph Tiger specifically feels like it has a shovel on the rear end and about 45 concrete blocks on the front end. And it just wants to go down into the sand rather than move forward. Now, does it mean that it's not fun to ride in sand or that you cannot ride in sand on a bike like this? No, you can do it. But the amount of effort that's required to perform this and to do this on this type of a bike, it can be exhausting at times. It's not the best place to put this type of a motorcycle. And I think most of you know that. And again, I'm under no illusions that, you know, I'm expecting something out of the ordinary here. So when I look back at this tire, I would say compared to the ones that I have ridden on adventure bikes in sandy, loamy conditions such as this, I would say that the Pirelli Scorpion Rally that was on it before is a much better option because it was a much more narrower profile and had a tread pattern that was more conducive to this type of environment. So if you guys are living somewhere where there's a lot of sand, let's say like the southeastern part of the United States or somewhere else in the world where you do have a lot of sandy, deep, loamy type of trails, you might want to look for something more more aggressive if you have an adventure bike and you're going to take it off road. I don't think the Shinko 804-805 is the best option in this category if you're primarily going to spend
spend your time in soft, sand, deep, loamy type of conditions. On the flip side of that, if you are somebody who lives in the southwestern United States or other parts of the United States where you have similar situations to Southern California, where you have dry, hard pack, you have your customary fire trail, whether it's deep gravel, deep rock, or you're crossing river beds, or you're just in moderate sand or moderate loamy conditions, I think you're going to do just fine with the 804-805s. I think you're going to find the benchmark of performance that they have is very close to what you're going to see of tires that are might be more expensive, such as the TKC-80s or the Mitas EO7s. I think you're going to be right there within that ballpark. And if you are giving up something in other areas to those tires, I don't think you're giving up much. So in a summary, I would say about 90% of all the conditions that you will encounter with your adventure bike are going to be adequate. There will be a small few scenarios and situations such as maybe you're doing the California BDR and you got a long stretch of sand that you might want to consider a more aggressive option. Because the last thing you want to do, obviously, is continue to dig this big monster up out of every hole you get it stuck in. So let's take a moment now and go ahead and wrap this video up. Okay, goons and gals, let me give you an up-close look at this tire. Obviously, this is the front, and like I said in the video, 36, 3700 miles on this tire. I mean, look at it. It looks freaking fantastic. The carcass looks great. Treads look great. Call me crazy, but man, I tell you what, guys, I think you could get 7K out of this. I know it sounds nuts, but I think you could get 7,000 miles out of the front. I mean, look, it doesn't even look half-worn, and that's 35, 3700 miles. I mean absolutely amazing now let's take a look at the rear because that's obviously a different story sorry the bike is dirty but i'm a goon so it's always going to be dirty a little different story here you're not going to get 7k out of this i might have i don't know another thousand miles maybe 1500 miles out of this tire obviously you see some flattening here and like i said i went on a 1600 mile southwest trip spent a lot of time on the freeway the interstate a lot of straight up and down riding in triple digit temperatures. Every day was 100 to 110 degrees. So when you're going four, 500 miles a day in intense temperatures, riding straight up and down on that hot asphalt through the Southwest, yeah, that's gonna accelerate the wear of your tires. And when you kind of think about that and how this tire has held up through that time, I mean, this looks fantastic. In fact, I never took a trip like that on my Pirelli Scorpion rallies. In a, 3,500 miles, my Scorpion rallies were way more worn than the Shinka. Way, way more worn. So I think I can get another 1,000 miles out of it. So any tire is going to have accelerated wear through those conditions. And just looking at the carcass, looking at the treads, this is fantastic wear. Now you also saw some clips in that video. I don't know how well the camera did justice, but some of those areas were so rough and those rock gardens were so long. I even went through some lava rocks, some really sharp pointy rocks, boulders, deep sand, a little bit of rain I had thrown at me at, at one point. Everything pretty much but snow and there were just some sections there that were really sketchy. Some stuff that was so rough I thought there's no way this tire is going to make it. It's just going to fall off. There's chunks of this rubber is just going to come off of this tire but look at it. I mean there's not any chunks or any damage anywhere to this tire, to the carcass. Just, it's amazing. So I've been fortunate enough to ride on a few different types of adventure tires. So if you're asking the question, could you find a 50-50 off-road tire? 50-50, let's say 50-50 adventure bike tire. Could you find one that has better on-road performance? Yes, you can. Can you find one that has better off-road performance? Yes. Can you find one that has more longevity, yes. Better durability, yes. But can you find one tire that can give you great quality in each one of those areas? It can give you good on-road handling, great off-road handling, great tire life, and you know, fantastic durability. And to do that, all for 160 to 170 United States dollars? The answer is hell no. And like I said, we're all kind of looking for that unicorn tire, the one thing that does it all. And when you're looking at a tire like this that I feel can give you great, the great on-road performance, the great durability, great tire life, great off-road performance for 160 bucks, this is about as close to a unicorn as you can get. Now I've ridden on TKC-80s, I've ridden on Kiro 3s, Anarchy Wilds, the, both sets of the Pirelli Scorpion Rally and the STRs. And to me, 
my opinion, and that's my opinion only, this is very comparable to every, every one of those tires. You're not sacrificing that much performance in this tire. And in most cases, you can get it for half the cost. You can buy two sets of these tires for what one set of the other one is. Now, if money's no object, then don't worry about it. But if you guys are out there and you're in the market and you're kind of weighing, you got, you got budget restrictions, you're looking for a low cost tire that you don't feel like you're on a cheap piece of crap that might kill you at any moment, give the Shinko 804-805s a chance. If you just want to save a couple of bucks and you want to take that extra few hundred dollars and buy yourself a slip-on pipe, you want to mod out some new pegs or something, you want to trick out your bike a little bit more, pick yourself up a set of Shinko tires. If you're just somebody who's got a ton of money and you're just like value, feeling like, hey man, I got a good deal. Any of you guys out there said, hey, I want a good freaking deal in the motorsport world right here. Shinko 804-805. Impressive tire. And where it stands for me, it's going to be hard for me. I'm still probably going to do it because there's other tires I want to ride on. But it's going to be hard for me not to want to buy this tire again. It's an amazing tire for an amazing value. And in a world where we're constantly getting this shoved up our backside, God bless you, Shinko. God bless you, Shinko. All right, guys, thanks for watching this video. If you liked it, subscribe to the channel. Show your support. Also, like the video if you like it. If you have comments, suggestions, you want to talk about other tires, just put them down in the comment box. Until the next time, remember, you stay born a goon.